Ray, have you ever noticed how different northern Maine feels compared to <laughs> southern Maine? Yeah, I have. In, in the southern part of the state, there's plenty of tourism. Sure. I always feel welcome there. Right. But when you get all the way up north here at Aroostook County into the wilds of Maine, it almost feels like we're kind of trespassing in a way, doesn't it? I think that's a good description. And it's up here in the wilds today that we're looking for a monster. Ooh, a lake monster? No. Some kind of sky creature? No. What is it, Jeff? It, this immortal monster lurks in the forest in search of alcohol. Ooh. And they call him Razor Shins. Hey, legendary listeners, I'm Jeff Belanger. And I'm Ray Osier, and welcome to episode 50 yes. of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. We're taking you on a journey to chronicle every legend in New England, one story in one week at a time. And we know great things happen when we share legends with others, so please tell your friends about our show, review us on iTunes, and get involved. We've made it 50 episodes in 50 consecutive wow. weeks. So Ray, beer me. You got it. Here you go. Thanks. So, Jeff, I guess we're, what, celebrating 50 episodes? Sure, that. But did you read the label on the beer before you passed it over? No, I guess I didn't. Hmm. This beer came from the Maine Beer Company. Right. Which makes sense because we're in Maine this week. It's an American Imperial Stout with 9.3% <laughs> alcohol. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this will put hair on your chest. Right. And it's called, oh, I get it now, the beer is called Razor Shins. That's it. So the legend of Razor Shins is prominent enough that a microbrewer named a beer after him. Well, I'm eager to hear more. Cheers. Cheers. We should probably get through this story quickly before the 9.3% <laughs> alcohol takes effect and, you know, we break in a song or something. Ooh. But alcohol is an important part of this legend. Don't we often find alcohol is involved as tails grow taller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So the story of Razor Shins has been around for at least two centuries. He hails from a time when loggers were flocking to Maine to help bring timber to a growing country. Now, we discussed another Maine woodsman back in episode 25 when right. we talked about Paul Bunyan's origins in the Pine Tree State. That's right, we did. But unlike Paul Bunyan, you'd never want to meet Razor Shins. Why is that? Because this guy can turn murderous if he doesn't get what he wants. And what does he want? Whiskey. Ooh. He expects regular offerings or he'll turn nasty. How nasty? Like scalp you with his razor shins nasty. <laughs> That's pretty bad. So razor shins is immortal and harmless if he's supplied with whiskey. Like me. Like, well, right. <laughs> <laughs> or beer, right? But not only is he harmless, if he likes the brand of hooch you leave out for him, he's been known to take down a tree or two for you. I'm guessing there's a butt coming. But if you <laughs> fail to leave him his libation offering, he may hunt you down when you're alone in the woods and scalp you with a single kick. This is a story the veteran lumberjacks tell the Greenhorns shortly after they arrive in the logging camps of Maine. They tell the story of Razor Shins, a Native American in full war dress. But when you look closer, you see he has razors as sharp as Excalibur where his shin should be. What a strange physical feature. <laughs> it is. All right, so where do we leave Razor Shins' offerings here? The Lumberjacks would tell the Greenhorns they need to leave a jug of booze outside their cabin door on their first night in camp. The next morning, the jug would be empty, and everything would be okay. But if you don't leave the whiskey, it could mean your doom. Over the years, this story's been told again and again throughout the logging camps of northern Maine. All right, I'm going to call foul on this one. Oh, why is that? I'm guessing the loggers use this legend and the general fear of Native Americans and scalping back then as a way to get some free booze from the new guys, right? <laughs> you know, Ray, you're probably right. <laughs> you combine the logging camp's desire for booze with an inherent fear of Native Americans, and I'm sure there were plenty of greenhorns who didn't dare risk it, and they'd leave a jug of whiskey out that was enjoyed by, you know, their snickering co-workers that night. So, Jeff, I did a little newspaper archive searching on okay. this story. I found an article from the January 11th, 1920 Boston Globe about razor shins. Oh, cool. Now, can you guess the significance of this article coming out in 1920? I can't say nothing's jumping at me. All right, 1920 is the year prohibition went into effect in the oh, United States. right. Alcohol was now illegal. Of course. Now, go ahead and read this headline from the 1920 Boston Globe. Okay, it reads... Will Razor Shin survive when his supply of rum is cut off? <laughs> okay, so the article then goes on to ponder if Prohibition will kill this legend. And I think in a way it did, but not entirely, right? I mean, Razor Shins is immortal. Oh, that's true. I mean, if nothing else, we're talking about him right now. Right. <laughs> and the other part of the longevity of this legend is it somehow sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? It does. Kind of like a song you've heard before. 
There's an old story with roots that go back to 16th century Scotland. It's been made into poems, multiple songs, and like all great legends, it's been updated, popularized, and then almost forgotten countless times. Wait a minute. I've got it now. I remember a song that goes way back to 1970 from the band Traffic. Okay. They released a single called John Barleycorn Must Die. Traffic was, of course, formed by Steve Winwood. That's right. So John Barleycorn is the story of a man hunted by other men, cut off at the knee, sound familiar? Mm. And eventually ground up until he became the strongest man of all. It's the story of turning grain like barley and corn into alcohol like whiskey and beer. It's a haunting song. Yeah. And I can't believe I haven't noticed yet. You're, you're carrying a guitar with you. <laughs> I am. Uh, so we've been saying in multiple episodes, we need to get you to sing a song, uh, Ray. Okay. I think we should hit a couple <laughs> verses of John Barleycorn Must Die. Sure, I'm game. Let's do it. Let me just turn on some effects, give us some reverb, make it sound all pro-like. They've wheeled him around and around the field Till they came onto a pond And there they made a solemn oath On poor John Barleycorn They've hired men with their crabtree sticks to cut him skin from bone And the miller he served him worse than that For he's ground him between two stones Man, you sound great, and God, that's a dark song. I think there's definitely a little John Barleycorn in Razor Shins up here in Maine. You know, both personify alcohol in a way. Yeah. Both legends remind us the lengths we'll go to for booze and the buzz <laughs> it offers, and both serve as a cautionary tale that no matter how strong of a person you think you are, alcohol is stronger mm. and can take you down if there's enough of it. Absolutely. And you know, Jeff, it's starting to get dark, and I'm thinking instead of finishing this beer... I'm just going to leave it right here in the woods for old Razor Shins. You know, just in case. And now I'm concerned because I already finished my <laughs> beer. Well, I'm glad at least one of us will make it back to upload this podcast. <laughs> if you want to hear our entire cover of John Barleycorn Must Die, consider becoming a New England Legends patron at our Patreon page. Just go to patreon.com slash New England Legends, and for as little as three bucks per month, you can get early access to new episodes, you get to hear bonus episodes, which is where we'll include the entire version of the song we played, and you can help grow this movement to chronicle every legend in New England. And don't forget, you can call or text us anytime on our legend line. Right. It's 617-444-9683. We love when you leave us voicemails with your own stories, and sometimes we get to play them on the podcast. Our theme music is, of course, by John Judd. And until next time, remember, the bazaar is closer than you think. 